Hey, check out his freedom spirit. We have got a tad bit of water in here. Someone tried to mush over this. It looks like that's uh, just roofing, like asphalt roofing type ceiling. So it appears to be, but this is all rotted. And we got some rotten here. So obviously you can see the breeze is blowing there because we've got the fan. We're going to take this lid off here, the front. The front's already wrinkled all the front, all there anyways on that top shoulder. So we're going to see how bad it is. That's all they use to protect it. This little bit. See that sharp edge right there? It's a sharp edge. And all they have is this little piece of tape on there protecting. That's metal. This is metal. This is a metal siding on here. So all it takes is a little bit of breaching right there. Get water flowing in there. So and uh, we'll also address these. A lot of times in these trailers they don't put a little ferrule in here. A little well there is a ferrule, shall you say. It's a metal one, but they need to put a little bushing in there, and they normally don't. I can feel that ferrule there, and it'll compromise that wire. I'll show you more on that in a little, a little bit. Once it dries out, it may be easier to see. But uh, and I know it looks like it's running over that way. So we'll give you some updates. We got say someone tried to put some more of this mesh on here. There's a pretty common leak. Water will run down here, get down, and start rotting this out. That, could be where it came from too, but uh, they got this all clobbered over as well. You can see it's all rotted. That's why we take these antennas off. They're just problematic. We highly recommend getting rid of those. And uh, again, there's all the tape they've got here. They pinned it all down with some of these little pin nails they use. Check yeah. some of that out. It looks like it's water stained. Water stained. But we'll see what. It was wet when I first did it. Yeah, we'll see how how it is when we take that all this apart. That looks uh, that looks kind of dry there. Yeah, this is all dry. It's just mainly in that, that section over there is what it looks like. We'll have to pull all that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get rid of all the wet stuff. We'll be back. We just want to give you an update. Here's our Freedom Spirit. We took this front phylon off. See the tracks from the... Well, look at all the critters in there. That's uh, termites and termite poo right there. That's what wow. it looks like. Mm -hmm. What well, they it's call that? Frass? Yep. Look at this. Yeah. But we got a little bit of framing to do on this. And all of that was due from that top edge up there leaking down. And all that water just funnels in here. So this seems okay. We're going to mold kill that. You can hear that sounds good. So we might have just caught this in time. But this piece is rotted. That's rotted. We got a few sticks that are rotted. So we're going to stitch them up and get it back to where it needs to be. And we got some more delamination on this side, which we probably can fix that too. We can fix anything without having to tear it apart, that is. So. Yeah, the same on this side. We got a little bit of delamination. Let's see what we got. That's not terrible. No, that's not terrible at all. Maybe I'll dry that out. We can relaminate some of these. These are all your your plies to your plywood. You see when they say plywood, it's all plies. So the grain run, runs one way, then it runs the other way, and then it'll run the other way, perpendicular to each other, and they laminate it all together. Hence delamination. So and you can see them all in there. All the delaminate, all the uh, laminates. You can see the center one has that. See if I move the camera a little bit, probably help. You got that center one in there. That's the grain is facing us, and then these other grains are going this way, up and down. So, a little uh, plywood education for you there. That's right. So we'll take this piece off too. This bottom piece. We're going to expose the whole thing. More than likely, got to get in there. I'm sure there's a cabinet inside. We got to release it. Then I'll check all these radiuses, and we'll check all the insulin, all that stuff. We're going to check it all, make sure it's all okay, and uh, go from there. But uh, we just want to give you an update. This is some of the stuff we run into, and we try our best to give people a pretty good time frame of when they can get their coaches back. But sometimes we open it up, and we just don't know, and we can't just say, oh, put this back together just to get another one in here. We don't do that type of work. We're not in the 
just uh, slap them together and get them out the door type thing. You know, we want to make sure they're done right. We do every one of these like they're our own. So we're going to take the time and do this right. Put all that new framing back in there and stitch it back together the way it should be. And then like I said, like this one up here, that one looks real wet to me. And then this one over here, that one looks a little soft. So we're going to check all those and make sure everything's right. But some of that delamination, if you remember, it was all rippled. Some of it's mainly due because there's no support underneath there at all. So all they do is they just ran this, uh, they had this sheathing right here. They just ran it up and there's just not a lot of strength in there. So there's not enough to really hold it from disshaping, you know, if the heat hits it and so forth. So we're going to try and strengthen some of that up too. We may end up putting a couple more radiuses in there. Maybe a couple more stretchers to kind of pull it together. So we'll see as we keep going along. And uh, sometimes, you know, things change as we get up there and we open it up and we find there's something else in there. Oh, we got to change the plan a little bit. But, but nonetheless, whatever we choose uh, to get it corrected, it'll be corrected the right way. It'll be corrected properly to the point where uh, we can obviously extend a warranty. And um, we know there's not going to be any issues down the road. So. Well, we'll be back more with this freedom of spare. Right now, we got to get this son of a gun to dry out, so we're going to have to go find a big old fan and sit it on here. Let's give you an update on this freedom of spare. So we took all the insulation down. We put a fan on it. We thought we got most of it all dry. So we're going to try to frame all this in here down the bottom. This is all, as you can see, we took it all apart because it was so rotted, it was almost mulching. But it's still wet, so I want to make sure it's not rotted and then we'll discern what we need to do sometimes you end up with some wet wood that may be just water stained so we also took the lino out of there to the floor and we kind of rolled it back we want to make sure this it sounds good as i'm tapping on it it doesn't but this edge feels soft right there just that edge so i want to check all that and uh, at the same point i don't want to open up a whole can of worms for this customer here but we're going to try and stitch it back as best we can we may have to just cut that and then add a piece and put a strip inside there that's that may be an idea too so we got a couple of different ideas and then this piece here i didn't like because it was wet and i want to know if that'll dry out too this one but you can hear that sounds solid but then i got that up there and again is that water stain or is it rot so when it dries out i'll know better and then all of this was all rotted anyway so i'll have to skin another piece inside this whole triangle area right here all of this We'll put another piece in there so we can relaminate the siding here, the phylon. We'll have to glue it back in there. And then um, we'll make sure all this... Well, actually, I'll take that out now. You can see how that just flopped out because it's still wet. Evidently, they didn't grab that real quick. We just put that fan on about two seconds ago, and I said, well, let me get a video on it. But you can see how wet that is. So we'll let all this dry out. we got still some moisture down inside here. So all that seemed dry. This is all dry right in here. So obviously it was leaking right down in there and just come down this whole shoulder, if you will, this whole corner saturated it all down. So all this will get removed. Let me see, this is, sounds crunchy, but I want to get, if there's any wet insulation, I want all of this out so it'll dry nice. And then we can figure out if I have to, we'll reframe what we need. And then uh, the bottom tails here, I think on the other clip, you see that they were rotted so I just cut them free and we're going to put another piece in here when we go to frame it actually it's right there that's our segment right there I was just showing them how we were going to do it and there'll probably be another piece of steel here this will carry and then we'll have another one and we'll cinch everything all together and it'll be screwed and glued and tattooed so we'll get it I'm trying not to interfere with this panel because on the other side of this interior panel is the wallpaper and I really don't want to mess with that you know if we don't have to I like to try to keep things as original as we can even if I even if it was really down where like sometimes on some other ones what we've done that's the paper right yes right on the other side of that thin thin layer right there that's the paper the, the, the interior finish and on other ones we've laminated and glued in a piece of uh, rigid foam that we've put in there and it gives it a nice strong backing and then you don't have to tear and replace all that whole wall skin it's not necessary it's thin as it is it's only eighth inch it's just meant to really hold the paper really there's no strength to it so why tear all that paper out and everything just to put another piece as long as the rod is out of there it's not a problem like and as long as it's rigid enough where if something were to hit it it wouldn't you know blast a hole through it or whatever if you had to like poke on it but you can hear that's that's pretty solid that's pretty solid so there's no reason to start digging and start breaching into somebody's wallet for something that we can you know get fixed properly but at the same time saving some money on the doing so 
So we'll give you more of an update, but right now, like you see, we have those big fans just trying to dry it all out. So it'll sit here again all night and get it dry. All the other stuff, it dried, which was a plus because it helped us take it apart. When it's all rotted, it's hard to cut. It's like mush. It doesn't want to cut well, so at least this way we got that. And then uh, before we leave tonight, we'll probably redirect that fan over in this way, and I'll just let those things run all night and get it all nice and nice and dry so tomorrow we can take a look at it and see what we're going to do with it. So, uh, well, that's our update on this old Freedom Spirit. But we'll get it back on the top. We got some rot. There's an antenna up there as well, right there. Just right where you see this is open, there's one of those crank up deals. We also got another blower up there, right there, another fan. You just see the top of it, it's a carpet blower. So we've got that drying that section out as well. And then, like you said, there's a crank up antenna. We got some decking issues that are. Uh, let's see if I can go up there and show you. Got these old stairs, this little ladder that we got on the side. So you see this front section right here is bad and then you can see right there that section so we're drying everything else out make sure we're good and dry before we start putting things together then we got to go back and mold kill it we we'll wait for the mold kill to dry and then we go and start doing some work so sometimes it takes us a little bit to do some of these projects and uh, we don't know all what's involved until we actually get them apart and we try to do the best we can to get these coaches back as quick as we can uh, but at the same point, you know, we want to make sure they're done properly. So sometimes, uh, you know, we run over schedule. And, uh, but it's only because we're trying to do the best we can and make sure the quality of work is there. I wouldn't, wouldn't want someone to come back for uh, another failure that was something we could address if we just took just a little bit more time to do it properly. So, and this is one of those cases right here. So, well, we appreciate you watching, and we'll get you more updates on this here just in a little bit as soon as we keep moving forward with it. All right, this is our freedom of spirit. Every time we come over and try to get some work done, we find more issues. So what we did is took off that bottom skirt right there because we had we were originally trying to work with this. But that skirt came over and it was interrupting it. So we took that skirt off, and we're looking at this down here. That's It's wet. You see my fingers right there just from touching it. So we want to see, again, is it all the way or how much we got to do to repairs on it. And then we started going all the way down here. We've got these blowers on here. We got them on there because all that insulation or most of it up underneath there was pretty wet. And you can see that rot goes all the way down here. We've got probably maybe six, seven feet of it right there. So again, we just sit the blowers on it we gonna take this here and investigate it afterwards that's what we're gonna do and see again if it's just damp and it can dry out and it'll still be solid good wood or if it is actually rot you know and some if it's much more than probably three-eighths of an inch or so I'll, I'll tear it out and we'll replace it so that's what it's looking like I know this bottom piece looks a little suspicious to me too and when I went around the other side and poked at it it sounds pretty hard pretty strong it's not uncommon to just have these ends kind of rot and I could probably put some metal on there and pull all that back together. So that would still give it plenty of strength. But I still want to see if this piece is even worth trying to put a piece on there, right? So we'll find all that out when it dries up. And in the meantime, we may move forward with some repairs if we can. And then probably move forward with maybe even getting some of the roof on. Because all this we can do whether the roof is on or not. So that's what we're trying to see how far we want to move. So we just called the owner and let him know what we had going on and where he wanted us to go and he said keep plugging along and so we'll give you more updates and we'll let you know. Uh, back at our freedom of spirit we got a mess going on here. So what we have done we loosened up the decking and the reason for the loose up of the decking was to find the wires that we were talking about. So we had the electrical going down. Remember the ferrules that I was showing you? So we just put these bushings in here. So we went along and we did every one of them in here all the ones on the other side we did them all to make sure so now we got the deck up so now that we got the deck up here there was a couple of rotted boards here you can see this one went over here on the refrigerator there's another one right over there which went on the opposite side over on this for the refrigerator vent there's a refrigerator right here there's a refrigerator vent so we're going to put two new pieces on here and we got a new piece going up on there and we'll probably be able to layer back the original pieces to put them back in here but now that it's up and we've already got it, you can see there's no glue on here. 
that's the way they roll them out at the factory, no glue. So they just want to get it down as quick as they can and get it out. Why waste the money to put glue on it? And the glue is important. It holds, in my opinion, it holds the whole thing together. It takes a lot of the uh, pressure in the, in the, acts as a buffer, takes the stress off of the fasteners. And you can see these are all they use to shoot them down with. They use these little, these little nails here. So we're going to staple them down, though, and we're going to staple the heck out of them and uh, get it down the staples. The reason why you wouldn't want to use all these nails in here is you would have a very good chance of splitting this. This here, some of them are OSB, and uh, on this particular one, you can tell this is just real wood stock. That's just one by one, uh, three quarter by one and a half that they use for the trusses. So that's what we're working on right now. So we'll glue it all back together, get this all assembled, and then we're going to try to get the decking on, excuse me, the uh, roofing on here as well. But like I said, we got these bushings in here. We got them in here. We got them all the way down, all of them. So now the wires won't get compromised by that little ferrule in there. We uh, scoot around this side. Thank you. So, same thing here. We still got to waiting for that to dry out on there. It's pretty much ready to go, but we're going to just try and get the roof system down and get that going. So we've got all our bushings in there, and then uh, one of these trusses is split, so we got a new piece to go on top of it, and we're going to glue and secure that back in as well. So, but that's, uh, like I said, that's about where we're at. We should hopefully have this done here shortly, and we'll give you yet another update. All right, so we get this uh, other deck. We're putting it all back down. What we're doing is we're gluing it. We'll get some okay. glue on there. Then we're going to reset it and we'll shoot it back down. Get the insulation back in. Make sure we get all our little bushings in there and our wires. So that's what we're working on now, just getting everything set and laid back in. And again, get all the insulation in and fasten her back down. So we got one side glued down on this Freedom Spirit. We still got to work on the front end. And what we're doing now is rolling it with this heavy roller. We already glued it, rolled it over. Now we're going to do this one here. You can see all our protective strips we got in here. So we'll flip this back like that, glue it, roll it back, and we'll be rolling it back down real tight with this big old roller. Well, the machine. I'm not talking about this big roll on this guy right here. And that'll uh, get it down there real good and tight. <laughs> okay, we'll be back. So now we got the glue going down on this other side of this Freedom Spirit. And then what we'll do, once it flashes off, which some people call it dry, it's called flash off. Once it flashes off, then we'll roll it over. So you, we don't, we're not putting glue up here yet. We don't have glue over there yet because we still got to work the front end. So we just want to try and get some of this roof on and uh, work as efficiently as we can and we'll flip this back and we'll be able to fix all this and then we'll roll the roofing back over when we get it done because we still have to you know, account for this here. We gotta fix a file on over here as well. So that's what we're up to. And we'll be Based back. on this uh, Freedom right here. Right now this is the fiberglass that's gonna go on the front right here. But we're just getting it all prepped. So we gotta sand it down and we gotta prep it. Then we go up these groovy stairs. Makes it a lot easier when you want to take a look at your coach. You don't have to climb up ladders and jump on scaffolds. And what we're doing right now is heat welding all these in here. We got this one here going in. But all this is all heat welded. So we got a three inch flange right here. It's all heat welded all the way around. A big old hot air gun right there. Like a hair dryer on steroids. So this is refrigerator. Then we got a skylight, got a vent, and then if you look the way we design these, got a flange here. Again, this is a three-inch weld. This is going to get wrapped down the side, but you got a three-inch weld. All of it's welded. All of that. It'll be a heck of a water drop to get through that. Then we get the curb. Now, obviously, this end being the front, you get caught in a storm, and it's just really pushing across the roof, a real heavy storm with a lot of wind. It's going to come up here and hit this curb. I don't want any wind to try to push that up. 
So we got this flange on the top. Any water that hits this flange, we made a recession on here. Okay, so anything that gets on here it has to come and fall off. It can't even go back that way. They all have them like that. All of them do. Even on that one, they all have the recession. So we've obviously got to get those. You can see we've got screws in there. We fasten them down in every corner. They're all fastened in there. And then uh, again, we heat weld it all around. Once we get it all heat welded, then uh, it's we put the components back on. This will have refrigerator base. So obviously that all the skylight. You see, so. So this, literally, when you heat it up with this hot air gun, it will fuse itself back together. It'll melt right in together. This is a thermoplastic. This is the same product you can find on a hotel, you find it on an office building, a library. This is a commercial grade. It's called a structured TPO. What structured means is that it's got a weave in it. See, I don't know, you probably couldn't see it off of there, but the weave is basically a mesh. It's a fiberglass. You can see the strands right here. See them? So those strands run through. It's like a screen. You can see them right there. That's what gives it its tinsel strength, something that may impact or hit the roof. That's where it gets a lot of its strength right there. You can see them even right here. Probably be a little better to see. Right there. So it's a, this is a real heavy-duty roof system. This is a 60 mil is what it is. It's GAS brand, Evergard, and it is, uh, excuse me, a TPO, which is thermoplastic. That's what it is. Like I said, everything will heat well together. Now all we're trying to do is just set that that edge, just like we did here. How we set the edge right on here. So you could, on the commercial end, a lot of times they'll just weld it and you'll see that, that square edge. I just don't like it, you know, much like what you would see on here. It's the same thing, but I like to set it all down. I think it looks cleaner, but it also prevents anything from trying to hit it. Maybe a collection of even dirt, it will help wash it away. But that's the way we do them. That's the right way to do them. A lot of times when I did commercial repairs, I'd go up there and you go. You have a checker tool and you check these, and uh, the tool would drop back in because that edge wasn't tight. So that's why we do it. But that's about where we are so far with this freedom, and uh, we'll be back with more. Like I said, we're prepping that fiberglass, and then we'll have to set that on there. Let me. Uh, I'll go back down here. And show you what we did for framing so far. I don't think I showed you that. That would be a good idea to get a mop through this place. Push broom. Alright, so what we did on here, we showed you we had blowers on there. All of this was rotted. So we got a member going across there, and then we just stick framed it all down here. Add some more strength. We still got to box frame that out. We got a new piece down there. It's going to go in that way up against that board is good and before it was wet so that's why i say we want to check it all out and then we adhered this all back and that's why we got these braces on here for now and uh we fixed the piece in the back this is a brand new piece of luon right behind here this piece behind there that's new so we put that in there glued fastened it all in there and then we glue the phylon which is the outside finish here we glued it back on to the to this piece that luon that's what everything here as you can see glue and screw glue and screw you can see all the glue we use and uh, this is a structural grade actually this is the same product this is really strong too but um, it is the same product that we use to actually caulk the coach when we run the caulking down the sides and for the termination bar it's that good you can use it it's like liquid nails on steroids designed to be outside so it is super super strong so we use it for everything it's just uh, easier than having other products around and it's stronger it's actually stronger than liquid nails and once that's stuck you can take all this apart you can literally take all this apart and that would still stay in place so the purpose of all that adhesive is to absorb any shock or vibration so it doesn't want to wiggle these screws loose and everything will stay nice and tight so like I said this piece is gonna be the one we got this faded up in here that's the way it goes we're gonna put a spacer in here that's what that's for it's just a sample and then we're gonna put another piece of plywood on that to build it back out so we can put the other piece on there and this is the storage area and we cut some new radiuses these are those that are going to be going up on the top right there you can see one two three so we're going to put some more in so we have some strength on that fiberglass 
when we first, if you look at the first clip here, if you remember it, that was all wrinkled. And it was wrinkled because there wasn't enough strength up there. So we're going to add some strength to it, and then obviously we're going to get some sheathing on it. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, then we'll bring it all down. So we'll be back. We'll show you how this all kind of is that freedom of spirit. We got all this framed. Everything's all together. And a big old piece that goes down the bottom. That's what that is. But we've got uh, it all insulated and everything's all glued and fastened in. So now we're just getting this piece prepped and we'll get our insulation in there. Now what we're doing, we already ran the wires. We're going to get some plates. We're going to put some plates on here and over here. So this way we don't ever get any staples or anything through them. And compromise the wires like right there. So that's where we're at so far with this. Then we glue the file on onto it and put the corner mold on. Is she ready to rock and roll? All right, what we got? So we've got everything all done now, and what we're doing is gluing on the file on. So we get all these pieces done. We've got the insulation in there. Then uh, underneath this piece here, we put a we put some plastic up underneath here because this is aluminum. And I want to make sure that nothing, uh, like inside here, I just don't want to make sure any condensation gets in there. So we did all that, try to help stave that. And now, like I said, we're just trying to glue all this. And we've got this lower end right here we just got. That's what we're working with. So it's a slow process because we do it in stages. But one of the things we also did right here, you can see some of that pinkish marks on there. What we did, put some Bondo on there, make sure that thing is nice and smooth as it goes across. It takes a little bit. We'll make sure this thing sits real well when we do it. So now we take our, our other balance roller right here, and that's what we're doing. We're just rolling it over, make sure everything gets tight, and we'll do it yet again. And we'll put the lights on. That's what we're, what we're doing there, spraying it down. A little bit of that adhesive in the beard, it would be hard to hard to peel out. <laughs> yeah. so you got some on your arm. You got some on your arm right there. Yeah, I don't know who that guy I don't know. I would never have done anything like that. I, I wouldn't. No, no, not me. I don't, I don't make that stuff up either. All right, we're back here at our Freedom Spirit. So we've got a couple of issues on here. We've got a couple little bubbles up here. We work to try to get them out. They don't want to come out. That's what we're working with right now. We also got a tiny, tiny, tiny little crack up there, and I would decal will cover it. But uh, and I don't know if you can see that little bubble in there. It's right there. So that ain't the way we roll here at RV Roof Install. So we're tearing it all off. We're gonna put another brand new piece on there. Which you know that stuff is. I don't know if you've ever priced it, but this stuff is really expensive. So, but that's the way we roll. I don't want it rolling out like that. Even though it's an older camper and everything, he didn't pay us to just do that front end halfway. He paid us to put on a brand new piece. And that's what we're gonna give him, even if we have to do it twice. Here's our second piece that we're putting that on right now. We took that first one off, we didn't like it. I didn't like it. We already getting it, got it all sprayed in, it's all glued, so now we're just rolling it in place. It's on this uh, freedom, the freedom spirit. That's what it is. <laughs> 